Okay, so this is what we did last time. We looked at a game involving an entrance and an incumbent in a market. And the entrants had to decide whether to enter that market or not. And if they stayed out, the incumbent remained a monopolist, and the monopolist made three million in profit. All right? And if the entrant goes in, then the incumbent can decide whether to accommodate the entrants and just settle for duopoly profits, making a million each, or the incumbent can fight, in which case the incumbent makes no money at all and the entrant loses a million dollars. And we pointed out a number of things about this game. One was that when we analyzed it in a matrix form, we quickly found that there were two Nash equilibria. That Nash equilibria were in and not fight, and out and fight. But we argued that backward induction tells us that the sensible answer is in and not fight. Once the incumbent knows the entrant is in, they're not going to fight because one is bigger than zero, and the an entrant anticipating this will enter. And we talked about it a bit more. We said this other equilibrium, this out-fight equilibrium, it is an equilibrium because if the entrant believes the incumbent's going to fight, then the entrant is going to stay out, and it's costless for the incumbent to, quote, fight if, they, if, in fact, the entrant does stay out, because they never get called upon to fight anyway. So the idea of this was that, in, that for the incumbent to, to say they're going to fight is an incredible threat. Or, that's terrible English. It's the way it's always taught in the textbooks. It really be called a not-credible threat. And that not-credible threat is he's not really going to fight if the entrant comes in. Uh, sorry, sorry, he's not really going to fight if the entrant comes in, and therefore the entrant should come in, and in fact, the incumbent will accommodate him. So what we've shown here is if we believe this argument, then the entrant will come in, and the incumbent is going to let him in. All right? And at the end, we started talking about this in a slightly more elaborate setting. So let's just sort of remind you what that more elaborate setting is. The more elaborate setting is, suppose that there is one, uh, uh, one firm, one monopolist, and that monopolist... Uh, holds a monopoly in 10 different markets. So we'll have our monopolist be Ali. All right, so here's Ali. Here's our monopolist. And he owns uh, pizzeria monopolies in 10 different markets. All right, and each of these 10 different markets are separate. All right, they're different towns. And in each of those 10 markets, he thinks he faced, but he knows he's going to face an entrant. And those entrants are going to come in order. So let's just talk about who those entrants are going to be. The entrants are going to be uh, this person, this person, and so on. Let's find out who they are. So your name is? Isabella. And where are you from? Miami. Miami. So look, Miami is one of the markets, and your name is? Scott. Uh, from where? Wisconsin. Wisco where? Wisconsin. So where? Where? Madison. You? Madison. We've got two towns. Let's give you your towns now. My name is Lang. I'm from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Okay, we've got three towns. I'm from Miami, too. Ma oh, it's about <laughs> Yale diversity. Well, we'll pretend you're from somewhere else. Put them in New Orleans or something. <laughs> all, right? all right? Chris from Boston. From Boston, all right? From Orange, Connecticut. Fr from... Orange, Orange can I get you just down the road? From St. Louis, Missouri. All right, have I done 10 yet? I'm not quite at 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Suffer, New York. All right. Hong Kong. Hong Kong, that's way away. And Long Island. Long Island. I think I've, got, I've, probably got, I've probably got 10 markets here, okay? So Ali owns a pizza shop. He's the Monopoly pizza shop owner in each of these 10 markets. And what we're going to see is, we're going to see what happens as sequentially these entrants trying to enter. And the way, the way that this game's going to work is that these, they're lined up. We know the order in which the entrants are going to come. They're going to start off. The first person who's going to have to make a decision is... Enter. It, 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 it's Isabella, right? It's Isabella. And we're going to see how our monopolist responds. Okay, so, so, so let's, 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 let's have a look at this. All right, so Isabella, who's in which market again? Miami. In, in Miami. Okay, what are you going to do? Enter. Enter. What are you going to do? Um, I will fight. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. So you, you, you owe me a million dollars, okay? All right, so all right, one, one person's down a million dollars. Let's see what happens next. I'm going to stay out. Uh, okay, so the next second, which market was this? Wisconsin, Madison. Madison stayed out. I'm going to stay out. Staying Bridge, out? Bridgeport. So Bridgeport stayed out. I guess I'll stay out. Stayed out again. Stay out. Out. Which market are we up to now? Somewhere in, uh, somewhere in Orange County, wasn't it? Where, where are we? Orange, Connecticut. Orange, Connecticut. And you're Stay out. Stay out. I think I'll stay in. You, you think come in? Okay, and which market is this? St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, we got four. So you owe me a million dollars as well. Okay, okay. A couple of people owe me a million dollars. This is a good class. We're going to have plenty of money for lunch. All right. I'm also going to fight. You're also going to fight. And you're, which market is that? Suffer, New York. Where about you? Suffer, New York. Suffer, New York. Where, where are we on? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, Ali? Yeah. I'll fight. You fight? Okay, so you owe me a million dollars too. All right, that was eight. Nine. Out. 
out and 10 I'll stay out. stays out, okay? Okay, now let's just uh, notice something here. Uh, which, which, which was the 10th market? What, was, what, what town were you? Oh, Long Island. Whereabouts in Long Island? Oh, Huntington. Huntington. So if Huntington and Long Island, our last market, had come in, suppose you'd said in, what would Ali have said? I would have not fought. Would not fought? Aha, aha. Okay, so what happened here? What happened here? <coughs> well, we analysed this last time as an individual market. We argued that each, each entrant should come in, just as our first entrant came in, and our uh, monopolist should not fight. Right? That's, what, that's what we have up on the board. That's what backward induction suggests. But in fact, uh, Ale fought, a whole bunch of people came in, and a whole bunch of them stayed out. Is that right? A whole bunch of them stayed out. Now, why? Why was Ale fighting these guys, and why were they staying out? Let's talk about why. Uh, what, what market were you again? Madison, Wisconsin. So, so why did Madison, Wisconsin stay out? Well, we talked about last time how he has an incentive to fight now because there's more than just <coughs> our analysis up there in terms of establishing that he'll fight to keep people out. All right, so it looks like there might be some reason for fighting to keep you out. So why, let's just talk about it a bit more. So let's go to the third guy. You're, you're, which market are you again? Bridgeport. Bridgeport. So, so why did you stay out? Um, because I knew he was going to fight. You knew he was going to fight. Now, how did you know he was going to fight? Because he has... Um, he has an incentive to, um, to establish that, like he established that he was going to fight for every single um, market, and so I was going to lose out. All right, so we know, we think we know, we think we know that Ale is, you know, he's this tough Italian pizzeria owner, and we think he's going to try and establish what? A reputation as being a tough pizzeria owner by fighting these guys, perhaps fighting a few guys early on, in order to keep these guys out. And in fact, he successfully he had to fight the first person, but he kept out two, three, four, five, six, and this person came in, so seven and eight came in, but then nine and ten he kept out. So he kept a lot of people out of the market by fighting early on. And this argument sounds right, right? It seems to ring true, right? It's about establishing reputation. But now I want to show you that there's a worry with this argument. The worry is, this is the sequential game. Right? This is a sequential game. And like all sequential games of perfect information we've seen in the class, we should analyze this game how? Now, that wasn't loud enough. How? Backward induction. So where's the back? Where's the back of this game? Way back here. All right? Way back here. Sorry for the guys on the balcony. Way back here, we have the last market in town, which was the last market. All right? And if we look at this last market, we, in fact, saw that if the last market came in, Ali, in fact, gave in. Right? Ali gave in. Now, why did Ali give in on the last market? Let's have a look back on the board. All right? So on the board, we can see what that last market looks like. This is a, with 10 markets, this is a very complicated game. There's, you know, this would be the first market, and then there's, there's three versions of the, of the second market, depending on what Ali did in the first market, and so there's nine versions of the third. So the tree for this game is horrendous. But nevertheless, once we get to the end of the game, the 10th market, which was what, uh, Bridgeport or something, I've forgotten where it was at now, it was just, anyway, wherever it was, once we get to that last market, this tree pretty well describes that last market. Is that correct? Right? There isn't, there isn't another uh, market afterwards. There's only 10 markets. So in this last market, what do we know Ali's going to do? In this last market, if the entrant enters... Ali's going to not fight, which is exactly what Ali did do. So, when, so Ali, is that right? So when, when in fact, we discussed uh, the tenth guy coming in, you chose to... I would have chosen not to fight. Would have chosen not to fight. And that's exactly what the model predicts, right? He has no incentive to establish a reputation for the eleventh market because there isn't an eleventh market. He's down at ten. Is that right? So we know that in the last market, the tenth market, Ali actually is not going to fight. Right? And therefore, the, the person who's uh, the entrant in the, tenth mar in the tenth market should know that they can safely enter and Ally won't fight them. But now we're in trouble. Why are we in trouble? Well, let's go back to the ninth market, the second to last market. So I've forgotten where it was. Wait, raise your hand, the second to last market. Okay. Second to last market is this guy? No, this guy. You're the tenth market. So this guy who's in the Hong Kong market, all right, he should know, he should know he's the second to last market. He knows that no matter what he does, the 10th market's going to enter, and Ali's going to give in to the 10th market. Ali's going to let the 10th, market, the 10th entrant in. Is that right? So the 9th market, the 9th market actually knows that nothing Ali's going to do here is going to establish a reputation to keep the 10th guy out, 
So therefore, in fact, he should what? He should come in, right? He should come in. Should come in. And in fact, if he'd come in, Ali would have had to give in because there's no way that Ali can keep the tenth guy out. We've just argued the tenth guy is coming in by backward induction. So since we know that the tenth guy is coming in anyway, and in fact, Ali is going to accede to them, there's no point Ali trying to scare off the tenth guy. So in fact, Ali is going to say not, no fight to the ninth guy. Right? I was going to say no fight to the ninth guy. But now we go to the eighth guy. We've just argued that the tenth guy is coming in anyway, and Ali's going to give in to him. We've argued the ninth guy is coming in, so Ali's going to give in to this guy as well because he can't put off the tenth guy. And therefore we know that once we get to the eighth guy, once again he can safely come in because Ali knows by backward induction he can't keep the ninth and the tenth guy out anyway, and so this guy should come in as well. And if we do this argument all the way back, what do we get? What do we get? Yeah, we, he lets everybody. He in. lets everybody in. Everybody should come in, and he should let everybody in. So we have a problem here. We have a problem. Backward induction says even with these ten markets, Ali, in fact, should let everybody in. Everyone should know that, so they should come in. So there's a disconnect here. There's a disconnect between what the theory is telling us. Backward induction is telling us. Ali can't keep people, keep people out by threatening to fight, by establishing a reputation. And what we actually just saw that what happened, which was Ali did fight and did, keep, did keep, keep people out. And we know that other monopolists do that as well. All right. So how can we make rigorous this, this, this idea of reputation? It's not captured by what we've done so far in the class. So how can we bring back what must be true in some sense, this intuition that by fighting, Ali could keep people out and that, and that therefore will keep people out? So to, to, to make that idea work, I want to introduce uh, a, a new idea, 